So back in 2023, we did a box office draft where we picked five teams each. And the goal was to make the most amount of money worldwide from those movies. Heavy lies the head that wears the box office crown. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about uh, the box office draft in a little bit more detail, trying to see um, what movies did well, how much they spent to make them, how much those movies earned. Aaron's made some graphics for us. The Marvels and Aquaman lost money. Both were a giant disappointment for my team. Welcome to Backseat Directing, where we talk about movies, TV shows, comics, and more. We're your hosts, Andrew and Aaron. We put out new episodes every Monday and Thursday. And this episode is finally here, where we are recapping our 2023 box office draft, and we're titling the winner. Three, two, one, action. action. All right, we've waited one year to do this episode. So back in 2023, we did a box office draft where we picked five teams each. And the goal was to make the most amount of money worldwide from those movies. And at the end, we would crown the winner, the 2023 box office champ. And that was Andrew. Ah. <sighs> Ah, Andrew, Andrew, ah, you know, cue the audience. Ah. Heavy lies the head that wears the box office crown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's it like? How, how do you feel? You just won the box office draft of 2023, Andrew. How do you feel? I'm not going to Disneyland. <laughs> Disney had a terrible year at the box office. So we're going to, we're going to go over a couple of things in this episode. But if you want to sponsor the show. We're here. I mean, yeah. I'll change my opinion right yeah. back around. We love Disney. I, no. I will go there. <laughs> um, but so we're gonna talk. We're gonna cover a lot in this episode. We're gonna talk about uh, the box office draft in a little bit more detail. Trying to see um, what movies did well, how much they spent to make them, how much those movies earned. Aaron's made some graphics for us, and then we'll talk about a little bit about the year in terms of movies. What movies we missed for the box office draft? What movies were surprisingly successful or surprisingly unsuccessful. We'll go over the biggest flops of the year, which is kind of an entertaining and funny category to talk about. Um, but we'll get all to that in good time. I do want to start by thanking anybody who clicked on this video. Whether you're watching or listening, we appreciate you so, so much. Thank you. And please feel encouraged to like, subscribe, and then interact with us as well. Leave comments below so that we can discuss with you. We respond to every comment um, on, on the show. And we love to get to talk to, to people about movies, especially new people discovering the show. It's really exciting. We've had some good comments recently. Um, one yeah, of them, you, you can do so in the comments, but then you can also join our Discord, which is free. The link is in all of our YouTube videos, so you can chat with us there. We'll, we'll, we talk about upcoming episodes, take suggestions, talk about movies, comics, TV shows, anything in the visual, visual medium. We're talking about it, and we'd love to have more people join in on the conversation there. I think Andrew has a few comments from one of our episodes that has blown up recently and has, what, like 8.4 thousand views or something, which is... 8.7 now. Yeah, the most by far for our channel, and that was on our Blue Eye Samurai Best Show of the Year. So you, you got a comment or two from there? Yeah, so Aaron's really having up that episode. This is not the episode I was reading a comment from. Oh, really? So definitely go watch that episode. Okay. Um, this is a comment I really liked from our Rebel Moon episode that we just put oh, out sick. recently. So, um, oh, the, I know this comment. Yeah. I was thinking of it because of the idea of people discovering the new show, and I really appreciated yep. this comment from Jordy Jordy 6846 He said, thank you to the algorithm I found this channel. Funny guys that go straight to the point and know something about movies and the industry itself. Yes. Very interesting discussion about the title of the movie. I love talking about marketing behind movies, games, etc. Not often do you see uh, videos about it. Keep the good work going. Greetings from Germany. So... What's up? A new, a new awesome. friend to join us from Germany. So thank you so much for leaving that comment. And like I said, we respond to every comment. So we, yeah. we just want to talk about movies, whether it's the Discord comments or just talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really cool that the algorithm's helping us out a little bit. That's that's relatively new. 
All right. <laughs> I'm about it. Let's go. It's got to shine a light on us every once in a while. All right. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and get into the movies that we each drafted. So, Andrew, why don't we go ahead and just recap our teams that we drafted. And this is in the order that we drafted them. So we got on Andrew. Andrew got to go first. So he picked a movie. Then I picked a movie. And we went back and forth as this list shows. So, Andrew, who did you have on your team? I picked Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 at the time. Uh, then Fast X, Ant-Man and the Wasp then Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and then for my final pick, Barbie. There we go. And I had Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which came in strong right away for my team. I had The Little Mermaid, Super Mario Bros., which broke that billion-dollar mark. The Marvels and Aquaman Lost Money both were a giant disappointment for my team. I was hoping that they could on a very bad day, bring in 500, you know, like I, I thought there was no chance that we would be just barely, if not at all, making back the budget on those movies. Yeah. The, the interesting thing about our list here that I'm noticing right away is that the two lowest budgeted movies from our teams, Barbie and Super Mario Bros, who yep. both spent a hundred million dollars each to make their own movies are the two highest grossing movies of the year and the only movies to cross a billion dollar mark. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it's I wild. noticed that when I was making this graphic, I was like, "How crazy is that?" You know, and of course, these budgets probably don't include like the marketing that goes behind it, but that means they definitely had the biggest profit margins. You're, you're by far. Also, on top of that, your third pick was Mario, and my fifth pick. <laughs> so the second to last pick of the entire draft was Barbie. And when you put that up against your fifth pick, which was Aquaman, it's brutal a tough draw. Brutal. <laughs> Which even your third pick of Ant Man and the Wasp, when you put that up against your third pick of nine hundred behind, embarrassing, so, yeah. yeah, embarrassing destruction. So, so how'd you feel going into your team into the year? Because I know for mine, I was feeling pretty confident you, going into the year with my team. You made me feel really nervous about Barbie the way you dogged it. If you go back and watch that actual episode, episode fifty, where we did the draft, Aaron did not have a lot of faith in Barbie. Yeah. And I I was I thought it was worried. gonna make four hundred to five hundred million dollars, which is still a lot of movie yeah. for a movie with a hundred million dollar budget. And for fifth pick. But I, I didn't think that it would crack a billion. That's yeah. crazy. I um I felt a little bit nervous, but I felt like I, I thought Dead Reckoning and Fast X were surefire hits because of the franchising yeah. and how well the past movies have done. So I thought I had a good chance. And then going into the first like half of the year, I was nervous because obviously Super Mario Bros. came out and made a billion dollars, watched it climb up to 1.3. And I was really nervous because I fell behind a lot there. But then Barbie came back with a with a bang. Yeah. Um, Did we say our full totals? Yeah. Let's, I, we did not mention that yet. So... Andrew's team brought in $3.8 billion. Dollars. And my team, Aaron, brought in $3.2 billion. Dollars. So I just needed a little over six to catch up to you, which again, if the Marvels and Aquaman would have had a bad day of what they used to have brought in. By six, he means $600 million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we would have had a race, you know, but unfortunately we did not. I feel like the the temperature of those two movies drastically changed throughout the year of 2023, you know, like Aquaman had me a little bit worried. That's why I picked it in fifth, you know, but the Marvels I didn't think would do that bad, but I, I really don't think their first trailer helped them much. Yeah, I mean, Aquaman uh, And then Ant-Man doing not as good as like Guardians or some of the other Marvel movies, I think also hurt it a little bit as well. Yeah, um, so that's why I picked Ant Man because I wanted it to hurt your movies. <laughs> it was not a banner year for for Marvel, for DC, or for Disney as a whole. So yeah, if you look at how like the studios performed overall. The highest grossing studio of the year was um, Universal. Mm -hmm. Universal put out Fast X. Um, they put out. Super Mario Bros. That was huge. Um, let's see anything else on this list from Universal. Well, they had two of the highest grossing movies of the year. Um, and, oh, they put out Oppenheimer, a movie that oh, we missed yes. from our list. Yeah. Boy, Christopher Nolan 
parted ways with his old studio and joined Universal for that collab. Yeah, so obviously our goal in the box office draft is to pick the top 10 movies of the year. And we were only off by two of those movies. When you pick the movies that were produced in America. <laughs> yes. So out of the movies that were made here in America, we had Barbie coming in at number one. Super Mario Bros. in two. Oppenheimer stole that third place spot, which wasn't on either of our teams. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3 and 4. And then in fifth, we have Fast 10, 6, Across the Spider-Verse, 7, The Little Mermaid, 8, Mission Impossible, 9, Elemental, which is that other movie that we did not pick. And then rounding out the top 10 was Aquaman. Ant-Man. Ant-Man. He tried. He tried to put his movie up there. So Ant-Man, you, Ant-Man, uh, Quantumania came in in the top 10, which, not to brag, puts... Uh, my top five, all of those movies in the top ten overall. Yeah, good so, for you. Pretty elite uh, scouting I did for my draft. Very good, very good. Yeah, I'm very disappointed in myself, and it makes me nervous going into our next pick or our next draft, <laughs> so, so nervous. which we're doing here soon. I'm nervous, and, I'm nervous as well. And because I did a lot of research last time, you know, for those of you that have watched episode 50 of our draft. You know, I had a bunch of numbers of like previous entries in the franchise or or whatnot. And mathematically, my numbers, my movies were going to bring in a lot of money, but it just didn't account for everything and it didn't end up happening that way. Very so it makes me nervous and doubt myself for this next draft that we're going to do. When I pulled up to your house, you were like a beautiful mind. You were like Russell Crowe. Just, you were at the window of your house just drawing some theorems on it like... <gasps> Barton plus Oppenheimer <laughs> equals success. Billions, billions, <laughs> billions, billions. Um, but oh, I want to explain what I briefly said earlier, the, the the U.S. releases, because there's in the top 15 grossing movies, if you check on IMDb, four of the top 15 grossing movies of 2023 were Chinese movies. Mm. So these are movies that basically only came out in China, but China has such a large population and so many people seeing movies that those movies made like hundreds of millions of dollars and got into the top 15. Two of them are Crazy. in the top 10. So there's two movies Jeez. that were only released in China that came out in the top 10. That's why Chinese markets can have such a big effect on like a movie's international success. Like the fast movies do really well in China, which means they do really well yeah. worldwide. It's because if, they only have like one word of dialogue. <laughs> Family. But if if, um, if Spider-Verse did well in China, which it doesn't didn't do well in China, then that movie would have been even bigger than it was. Uh, it looks like it brought in 300 million uh, internationally and 380 domestically. So, about heard, the same. I heard it didn't do well in China. Yeah, so internationally that I mean, out encompasses everything right. else. Yeah. Yeah, not just China. Um I think if we go and talk about the uh top movies of the year, Barbie and Oppenheimer, I think the fact that they came out on the same day Helped them both get to that billion and 950 yeah. million mark. They're going to be great for both of them or terrible for both of them. And luckily, it was great for both. Luckily for cinema in general and also right. for like audiences. But like movies had such a banner year this year. Like this is one of the best years at the box office in recent memory. Yeah. I mean, coming from 2020 and 2021, you know, those were two rough years last year or sorry, <laughs> two years ago now, 2022. <laughs> that had a that was big. It had Avatar and... We had Avatar, which made like two point something billion dollars. And then there's the famous story about, I think it's Spielberg thanking Tom Cruise for saving cinema. Yeah. I think so that was the wording Top, Top Gun, Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick, if it would have came out last year, 2023, would have been the highest grossing movie. And it lost by six, seven, eight, nine million dollars, 900 million dollars. To Avatar, which is those movies are just destructive at the box <laughs> office. Like we have to consider in next year when we do our draft for 2025, if the next Avatar is coming out, are we allowed to draft that or not? We've been talking about that because it's such a point. It's such a point of contention. The movie is that yeah. big that and like ruin the box office. Yeah, draft. like we we flip a coin to see who goes first, so it's random. So, so one could decide the winner. Yeah, like you could have four crap movies and have that movie and still win the draft. Yeah, I would be off my rocker to not pick Way of the Water as first pick if you had that. Oh, absolutely. You have to. <laughs> you have to. Um, but yeah, I think because Barbie and Oppenheimer and it made that Barbenheimer event, it helped 
both of them. I don't think Oppenheimer would have made that much. You know, Tenant didn't do nearly as good in the box office. And even his movie right before that, what was the one right before Tenet? I don't think it did as big. I think it might have been Interstellar, was it? Yeah, I think it was Interstellar. I'm going to look it up. But Interstellar, I, Tenet. But Interstellar Dun, Dun, wasn't close. Uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk? Let me look that one up. See, I know, I know my Chris Nolan filmography. Yeah, Dunkirk 2017. Pulling it up now. Interstellar was 14. Yeah, 530 million. So good, but not... That makes a movie every three years like clockwork. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it... That was good. Dunkirk did really good. $530 million on a $100 million budget. Definitely a success. Well, the failure of Tenet was the streaming release that it was just literally the reason that Nolan parted ways with uh, Warner Brothers, which he had historically made movies with for years and years and years. You know, like The Dark Knight, obviously, Warner Brothers movies. And mm -hmm. then he goes to Universal um, makes this huge banger with Oppenheimer that's going to be not only showered at award season, but $800 million later and top three highest grossing movie of the year. Now, Warner Brothers is begging to have him back. Yeah. And they, they are they are legitimately begging to have him back. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and in point in case here, like Dunkirk was 19th place in the box office for 2017. So like, we're not trying to draft that movie for a draft. So that, I think that's why neither of us picked Oppenheimer for our draft was because we we just were kind of going off of the trends of his previous movies but because of the event of Barbie and Oppenheimer they both elevated yeah and obviously the Dark Knight and that trilogy being an outlier because Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises both made an insane amount of money but that's right. a different story those were also what 2012 was the last one was Rises yeah so that was 10 years ago 11 years we're old. We're getting old now, aren't we? Aren't uh, we? Aren't we? I don't know. I don't know where that uh, came, came out from. Irish. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, in addition to our numbers here that we have for our team, we have the stats as well in terms of ratings for the team, so we can kind of see our box office numbers compared to what people thought of the movie and we have that here listed out we got our imdb scores our rotten tomato scores and then the averages of both for our team so andrew's average on imdb was a 7.5 out of 10 and my average for my team for imdb was a 6.7 out of 10 so overall uh you could argue that those movies were better and they made more money which normally checks out right um, the only number that my team had over Andrew was the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes at an 89%, and Andrew's team brought in an 87%. Um, let's see, which movie has the highest IMDb out of these? Spider-Verse has 8.6. Yeah. Looks like it's the highest. I think that's it. Yeah. Which, I can agree with that. What were some of your favorite movies of 2023? But Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning actually has the highest Rotten Tomato scores. Yeah, um, by a lot. My favorite movies of 2023, I actually thought about this beforehand. Top three. Um, it, it can be a close call, but top three I'm going to have to go with Barbie, Across the Spider-Verse, and Iron Claw. Mm. I haven't it's seen tough. Iron Claw yet. I really want to. It's tough for me because then you've got like Killers past lives some other really good movies in 2023 the killer i feel like is narrowly edged out by past lives and i'm trying to like control my uh recency bias i think my top movie of the year was definitely um rebel moon the i haven't watched it yet but <laughs> the the story for rebel moon was spectacular uh, we actually did a review on this movie that just came out if you want a week or two ago. explanation about why it's spectacular, you should watch that review. Because, I mean, you might think, look, it looks, it's bad. When you watch it, you think it's bad. But Aaron can really explain mm -hmm. why it's actually amazing. It's so good. Uh, so that was my favorite. But then underneath that, um, I'd have Across Spider-Verse at first, probably. And second, I would have Creed Three. And then third, I feel like I'm missing a movie. 
I did like the killers. What am I missing that I really enjoyed? I feel like there's one that I had above the killers in third. I don't think it was Guardians. You keep calling. Like you Guardians. keep saying the killer. The but killer it's called the killer. Yeah. Oh. There's a lot of. We have the killer. The killers with flower moon. <laughs> a lot of. Killers. There's too much. There is the killers, but it's. Um, but it, I really enjoyed Creed three. That's definitely the movie that I've seen the most. What movie are we? Look up. Look up 2023 movies and find the movie that you're missing. Um, I think that I wanted to talk about some of my least favorite, most disappointing mm. movies of the year yeah. really quickly. Um, which the ones that come to mind for me are uh, The Flash. Had a oh, The Creator. Me. I really enjoyed The Creator. You put that in your top three, though? I feel like it was. No. That's another contender for... Uh, but I really enjoyed it. It, it just looks so good. Sneak peek at our uh, Oscars episode that we're going to do, the backseat directing Oscars. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm a sucker for the cinematography. That's, if it that's, looks yeah. good, I really... I really push it higher on that, the list. That's a you nominee know? for our cinematography yeah. category for sure. Has to be sixty-five. That was a disappointment. One of the big, biggest disappointments of the year, sixty-five. The Flash, and for me, Indiana Jones, um, The Dial of Destiny. I thought that movie was super disappointing, especially the end. I really did not like. Um, I thought we both thought Dead Reckoning was a little disappointing, but we built it up a lot in our heads. Yeah, it wasn't that a bad one, movie. It yeah, was, we were comparing that to Ghost Protocol. Ghost Protocol, which, which is like obviously top tier uh when it comes to mission impossible and then even fallout freaking phenomenal you know and i think dead reckoning just kind of fell a little bit flat in comparison um action was still cool but i think some of the weight of the story was where it kind of docked the points for us you know i think some of the biggest surprises for the year for me include uh john wick chapter four and creed and john wick chapter four is actually a really good financial success as well I knew I knew I was gonna like those movies, but I liked them more than I expected. Is what I should clarify that with. Mm -hmm. Wonka, I, Wonka was really surprising. That movie was really good. I liked Gran Turismo as well. Um, I don't think you've seen that one yet. Uh, no, I haven't. It's on Netflix now, though. That one was cool. It had some very like simple special effects that just looked really cool. Like where he's sitting in the chair, and then the the car is animated behind him. As it's like oh, that, kind of yeah. going That's over trailer, top of right? him, and then like it transitions into the car itself, so it just looked really cool. The story was good. The story is actually pretty fast, the you guy know, which the... I appreciated because they could have spent a lot of time like with character development in the beginning, like before he's racing cars. But they like Great they move the story. story. Well, it's Gran Turismo. They got to go yeah. fast. Yeah, the, uh, exactly. the the guy who plays the main character of that is is, uh, is Farley in Blackburn, which was a uh, Amazon Prime yep movie. That that movie was really good as well. Um, I don't know if it would crack my top five, but it, Saltburn would be in my top ten for the year. And uh, let's see. I thought Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves was surprisingly good. That was one of the movies that was... Did that come out this year? Yes, it did. In like March. Oh my gosh. That's one of the movies... I thought that was a 2022 movie. It was surprising in terms of how well audiences reacted to it and people really liked it, but also surprising in the opposite direction for financial success. Yeah. is a kind of a big... I, I watched half of it. And never got back to finishing it, dude. The it, I really liked it. I, I'm surprised because you. I feel like you kind of turned me away from watching it with your review when we were getting all into our D and D stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I watched it because it was on Netflix, I um, I think it was on Netflix. I really I really enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. I thought it was charming. I I love Chris Pine. I think he's just like very enjoyable to watch on screen. So charismatic. And I thought that the the plot was fun. I mean, there was a cool Bradley Cooper cameo if you watch further into the movie. Um, I thought they did some really creative camera work too. Even if like the CGI is not perfect everywhere, you have to watch further to see the scene with the mirror that they do, or with it's with a painting, I think, and a spell. Mm -hmm. And they just do really creative camera work throughout the movie. They, they do have well. some pretty cool camera stuff uh, in transitions, yeah, and, and like transformations. You know, I thought Chris Pine really carried it though. I like him a lot. I like yeah. him and everything <clears throat> I've seen him in. Um, the 22nd highest grossing movie of the year, by the way, is Taylor Swift, The Aeros Tour. $250 million. <laughs> How much? Did, did, $250 million. It didn't even crazy. release in every theater. That's crazy. And not to mention how much her tour made. Oh, my God. Yeah. the highest. I think it's the highest grossing tour of all time. That's wild. It turned her into a billionaire. Was she not already? She wasn't. She does a lot of charity. Mm. I thought she was beforehand. Um... I think that's what turned her into a billion dollars. I have some, I, I hear a lot of Taylor Swift trivia, so. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes, you do. Um, some of the biggest disappointments over there. You want to go over some flops? Yeah, Aquaman. Financial. The Marvels. Teams. Everything from DC. everything on my team. Everything from DC, Marvel, and Disney. So, um, Aquaman, the Marvels, uh, Blue Beetle, Shazam. These are all financial flops. Wish, which was supposed to be the hundred year celebration for Disney, was also a financial flop. Just a rough time. For superhero movies and for Disney movies. Except yeah. Elemental, which is technically a Disney release because they own Pixar. That movie was in the, the, the ninth highest grossing movie of the year. So that yeah. movie was successful. That one started slow and, and then just up. built. Yeah. You and know, Ant-Man traction. Too. I didn't even mention Ant- Ant-Man's another flop. Yeah. In, in comparison to how Marvel movies used to perform yeah. for sure. But I mean, it's still in the, still in the top what? 10. It's the 10th, it's the 10th one. Yeah. But if, if I'm saying flop in terms of expectations, like you yeah. said, and little mermaid, did you mention that one? I feel like that one was a disappointment for my team as well. I drafted that second. Yeah. It's still one of the highest grossing movies in the top 10 and made over $600 million. But yes, mm-hmm. compared to the other movies that all made around a billion for Disney live action adaptations also could be considered a flop. Um, and then the only superhero movie that did really well this year was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, Across the Spider-Verse, yeah. Sony release, but... Not too far behind that. Just under $200 million away, which is also animated, which puts a crutch on movies for whatever reason, you know? Ridiculous. Um, oh, The Exorcist Believer is another flop from this year. Uh, that movie only made $136 million when it had really high expectations. Um Anything that was like a movie that went to streaming, I don't really consider a flop. Even if Killers of the Flower Moon didn't make that much money, everything is icing on the cake for them, really, because they just want that movie for their catalog. To say Martin Scorsese made an Apple TV movie, look at us for an award season. Dang, the creator did not do that great. Oh, it did bad. Yeah, I remember we talked about that when it came out, because they spent a lot of... 47th place. They spent a decent amount of money on that movie, 104. No, they had a lower budget for that one. I think it's 150 million, right? This is 104 million. Oh, that's the that's the gross, isn't it? The worldwide gross. I'm talking what about the the budget. Oh, budget. Yeah, they spent. Um, I think they spent. More, I think they spent more than they made without even calculating in uh, marketing. I'm pulling it up now. I thought that uh, No Hard Feelings was a good so, surprise this year. Good R-rated comedy. So going back to the creator real quick, 80 million dollar budget, 104 is what it made. So, still, still not which they surprised. said like they 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 obviously cut down the budget by quite a bit you know like mm. one of their marketing ploys was like this was shot on the sony camera you know like it's it's on a mirrorless camera blah 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 like we had such a small like footprint in terms of our crew and equipment that we were able to get the the budget down where we can go to all these different places and it did look phenomenal I think the story, again, just kind of fell a little bit flat. You know, like whenever we're doing a movie ratings, we separate our ratings into six categories, and the story is our first one that we go over. And we were talking about it in our Rebel Moon episode where we were saying how even if everything else is really good, great acting, cinematography, sound design is awesome, set character design, if that story isn't like at least average, you know, or Mm -hmm. just above average, then the movie isn't going to be remembered nearly as much and isn't going to be as good of a movie if the story was really good and everything else was a little bit lower, you know? Mm -hmm. So story is definitely king when it comes to making a movie or a show or even a comic or a video game. Well, maybe not a video game, but (laughs) the other ones for sure. What you looking up over there? I'm trying to look into how much money, because I realize you can check on here on Box Office Mojo, you can see how much money movies made in individual countries. Mm. So I'm looking at how much into how much money um, Spider-Verse made in China, because that's what our conversation was about earlier. So we've got the Hong Kong market um, for Spider-Verse, which is $3 million. Um, $3 million? Yeah, only $3 million. Dang. And so, is that low? Sounds low. Yeah, it's got to be. Old. Let's look at fa- Fast X for comparison. Hong Kong. Down here. Well, Fast X was only $4 million, so maybe it's not as low as I thought. I mean, Hong Kong is just a city, right? In comparison to all of China. Yeah, but that's how they have it listed on here. When it comes, it's under the category Asia Pacific market, and then it's just, mm. it just says Hong Kong. Let's 
the yeah oh wait there's a separate category for china down here at the bottom 139 million gross for uh for fast x 139 okay Let's see if there's a separate and one. what about across the spider-verse it's not listed huh just hong kong for spider-verse interesting interesting i think very not. interesting <laughs> i just watched the incredibles the other day god it's such a good movie isn't it, it is such a good movie <laughs> we, need, we need incredibles 3 out here i know right i was uh mr Increab. i was feeling a little under the weather and whenever i'm sick i always lean towards those pixar comfort movies you know to get me through i watched a bug's life what else did i watch i watched toy story watched the incredibles i was sick for a long time I actually watched the third one because I hadn't seen it as many times, but I wanted still something that I was familiar with, so I went with the third one. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, they're all good. I mean, I'm not as big a fan of number four, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hard to... We grew up with the other ones, too, so even if those ones aren't as good, we're still going to love them still more, you know? So much, yeah. All right, well, I think 2023 was a really good year for movies. Looking into 2024, I'm not as excited as I was for some of the releases in 2023, there's a really small slate of superhero movies because Marvel and DC are both doing some cleaning house. Mm -hmm. 2025 looks sick. Looks insane. I get yeah. the Batman part two. I, I have a feeling a lot of that might kind of spread out a little bit, you know? 2025? Yeah. We'll see if they change some of their expected dates. But yeah, 2024, like right off the bat, doesn't seem maybe as exciting, but there's still some good movies that are coming out. You know, Dune 2, I think, is pretty highly anticipated that was supposed to come out this year so that'll come out next year or sorry that was supposed to come out last year <laughs> in 2023 but now it's coming out this year it's the beginning of january it's <laughs> the hardest time to talk about new years <laughs> yeah um so that's another good point too all these numbers mainly the aquaman number is as of today which is january 3rd 2024 yeah, but, already, but it's probably not going to move it's already dropping to second and third in the rankings like the weekly rankings of the yeah office, so it's so it's, it's a pretty safe bet that the numbers are pretty much locked in um but yeah there, there's some movies that are going to be pretty good also spider-verse is apparently getting uh re-released in some theaters so coming up this year yeah oh nice i saw too that pixar and disney has a lot of re-releases of movies that came out during like the pandemic and stuff you're gonna be so. watching these numbers for the rest of your life. They re know, right? they release Super Mario Bros. and you're like, <laughs> add it to my team, <laughs> add it to my team. I'm gonna retroactively take the crown. <laughs> yeah, it made another billion. I'm in the lead. And then they release Barbie again. <laughs> <laughs> and back to losing. But hopefully, um, you guys have been following along with us throughout this year and enjoying this ride as much as we have because we've been talking about it all throughout our episodes this whole year and. Uh, outside of the show we've been talking to each other texting each other when new movies come out going on imdb and searching because we use the imdb numbers that's our official rule for us as mm -hmm. we use their worldwide numbers sponsored by imdb, IMDb bro <laughs> um but we have a blast doing it so we hope you have a blast riding along with us and comment to let us know that support us doing it again if you think we should do it again yep. um co comment and say yep do another one for 2024 we want to see what you guys pick if you're interested even if you vote no we're still going to do it and it's actually going to be the next episode that comes out after this one so andrew and i are about to do our draft and see which picks we get and these episodes will be back to back so we'll announce the winner of 2023 and then the next episode is picking our teams for 2024 who was, who was that again uh, you said the announced the winner of 2023 was thank you so much for tuning in this I is backseat directing uh we appreciate you watching uh, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. That helps out. Share with a friend, too. Uh, again, we have our Discord link in the bio. Check out our merch. I'm wearing one of our shirts now, too. Oh, there he is. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but, yeah, no, in all seriousness, congratulations to Andrew. He picked a good team and ended up winning. Uh, hopefully, my luck changes for this next time. This next year, I, I can't lose two in a year. I hope two your luck changes too. I hope you're closer. I can't lose two in a row. I just don't want to flop. You know, like <laughs> I want to, I want to edge to the seat race at the end of the year. Not like I have two oh, weeks coming on December, so yeah, it'll be interesting. I know, but like by October, we knew that it was over. Yeah. You know, before my movies even came out all the way. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. And. That's a wrap. wrap.